What's up, everybody? My name is Joseph Blade. And since we're finally wrapping up the Land for Time television series, thank God, I think it makes sense to talk briefly about the Land for Time television series. Shortly after the release of the abomination known as The Wisdom of Friends, an animated television series was released and aired for a good 26 episodes on television. So, as a lot of you may know, I grew up to these sequels, I watched them, but I always thought to myself, why didn't they just make a TV series? Had to be cheaper, it would have been a little better since these movies often have a lot of filler, and honestly, these stories would have been better told if just condensed to 22 minutes. So, why didn't they just do that? Well, after years and years of asking, I finally got the show I've been asking for. In 2007, when I was 13 years old and getting a little too old to be watching these movies, so why on earth would I be interested in the show? So yeah, you can kind of figure out why the show wasn't really a success. It just came out a little too late, and the audience growing up to the sequels were just getting too old at this point. So it only lasted one season. In fact, it took almost an entire year for that first season to air. That's never a good sign for any show. So, with me being forced to talk about the Land for Time franchise, it only makes sense to give the show a watch. And the question comes to mind, is it any good? It's kind of hit or miss. It's got some good episodes got some bad episodes it's it's kind of like the movies honestly it's just uh it's, it's what you expect from the land for time at this point it's for kids now before we talk about this video let me go ahead and answer your first question no i'm not reviewing every episode of the show that would just take way too fucking long especially given the fact that for what it is there just isn't much to really talk about now, I haven't watched every episode of the show, but that is to say, I kind of get the gist of it. There's no overarching story or subplots that's really that important to get into. It's basically just Littlefoot and his friends just hanging out in the Great Valley, doing their thing. That's pretty much it. Basically, you can kind of argue that the show is better than the movies. Since with the movies, you're suffering for about 80 minutes, but with the show, you're suffering for about 22 minutes. So, mm, that's debatable, I guess. We'll start off with talking about one of the most important parts of an animated television series, the animation. When you watch the later sequels, one thing you'll notice is that while the writing was getting worse, the animation was getting better. At least for the most part, it still looked pretty awkward at times. So with that in mind, the first thing you'll notice when watching the show is that the budget for the animation has been cut in half. Now for a television series, it's still pretty passable, but it still has those moments of awkwardness. Look at these shark teeth, for example. If evolution's a thing, then these are Goofy's ancestors. You can also tell that there were a lot of shortcuts made, like how awkward the jump cuts can be, and how jambled up it looks at times. But with the fact in mind that it's a TV series, it's still tolerable, I suppose. One thing you'll notice right away is that Chomper is back, and he's actually a main character. Which brings up the question, how did he get off that island? And details, details. One thing I don't have an answer for, however, is where his parents are. Instead, we have Ruby, a new character that was introduced into the show as his babysitter. Huh, I wonder how that interview went down. Hmm, either watch our child since we'll be gone for no explicable reason whatsoever, or get eaten. Your choice, bitch. Still, it's really weird knowing that Chomper is not only a main character, but actually lives in the Great Valley. And I'm not gonna lie, it's... Actually, kind of interesting. I mean, okay, it's not amazing or groundbreaking in any way. There's no clever social commentary or anything like that. But for what it is, I'm surprised that I found myself being intrigued by how all the adults were reacting to it. What they had to say about it. How they're okay with the children playing with a sharp tooth. How he can talk. It's genuinely kind of interesting to see how it all plays out. Hell, Doc comes back for one episode, and the entire episode focuses on Chomper, and how much he worries about what Doc will think about him. It's surprisingly enjoyable to see how this dilemma plays out. I mean, okay, again, it's nothing special, but I guess the bar has been set so low for the Land for Time franchise that I'll just take what I can get at this point. In fact, this actually brings up my favorite episode in the show. The episode is called The Brave Long Neck Scheme, and surprisingly enough, it stars Allie. Yeah, Allie, from the fourth movie. Now, if you heard my thoughts on that movie, you'll know that there are cinder blocks more interesting than her. But it's funny given how the best episode in the series actually stars her. Now, that isn't saying she's the reason, in fact, she's probably the worst part. The episode is about Littlefoot and Sarah seeing that Allie's herd has come back to the Great Valley. But when they meet up with Allie, they find that she has a new friend named Rhett, voiced by Tommy Pickles of all people. Go on without me! I won't let them hurt you! 
So it turns out that Rhett is apparently the bravest of all the long necks, as he's defeated multiple sharp teeth in his day. His stories are so unbelievable that, yeah, Littlefoot and Sarah don't believe him. But Allie does! <laughs> I guess she's just so boring she'll believe anything for a sense of purpose. So Littlefoot and Sarah come up with an idea in order to prove that Rhett was lying. So they get Chomper, a real sharp tooth, to scare him, and of course it works. Rhett runs off screaming, they all laugh about it. Now you think that this is the part where, you know, they feel bad for him, they go off to apologize, he learns a lesson, they all become friends, and yeah, the basic kitty formula that you expect from a kid show like this. That happens, but first... Rhett gets the entire long neck herd together to form a lynch mob and try to murder Chomper. I'm dead serious. He's getting away! <laughs> We've got him now. Look guys, I'm not fucking with you. I mean, I'm, I'm being dead serious here. Like seriously, all of these peaceful plant eaters and whatever, the long necks, all just coming together to murder a baby shark tooth. I mean, okay, sir, even if he's a shark tooth, still he's a baby. What's he gonna do? And just, just how far they go out to make this happen. They try stomping on him, they try biting at him, they crash into each other, knock down trees, and just, they just go all out to murder this baby. I mean, look at their faces! Look at their eyes! They, they got murder on the eyes! Like someone took a big old bucket of murder and just splashed it on their face and then they just fucking went mad over it! It's kind of funny in a masochistic kind of way. But of course, by the end of it, Littlefoot and his friends save them, and as I said already, the lesson was learned and everybody just goes about their day and pretends that Chomper wasn't almost brutally murdered. But still, that was fucking incredible. I mean, it was worth seeing through that episode just for that ending. Again, it was really funny in a very sadistic kind of way. So, hey, if you want to check the show out, I recommend this episode. If you're, you know, sick like I am. One thing the show loves to do is bring back the guest characters from the movies, like the aforementioned Ally, Doc, Mr. Thicknose, Guido, and many others. Well, now, I personally don't have a problem with this. If fan service is done right, it's done right. The ending scene from Rogue One? That was awesome. So, are the cameos in the show any good? Again, it's pretty hit or miss, honestly. One example that does work fine is when Bronn, Littlefoot's father, returns to the Great Valley with Shorty in order to give Littlefoot his great long neck test. A test that apparently all long necks go through to test to see if they'll become great leaders of a herd one day. Kind of pointless when the characters don't age. One that doesn't work, however, is the one that I already brought up. That one being when Allie came back. Still as dull and boring as ever. Also, the guy they got to replace Mr. Thigno sounds nothing like him. I know they can't bring back the celebrity voice actors from the movies and everything, but Jesus, this just sounds off. Mr. Longneck, I take back all that I said about Littlefoot. He's quite a remarkable young one. You came to the right place, Chopper. I've heard of many ways to stick things together. No reason they wouldn't work on teeth. It's also really weird hearing Doc sing. He sings at the end of his guest episode, and it's just weird. But you taught me your friend, the sharp tooth's new friend. And I'm so glad that we can be friends. It's like hearing Clint Eastwood sing the Barney theme. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Which, speaking of which, brings me to easily the worst part of the show, the songs. Because holy fuck! Fuck, the songs are fucking terrible. And I know what you're thinking. Jesus Christ, they wrote songs for this shit? Well, if by writing songs you mean just lazily take the songs from the other movies, barely rewrite them in a way that feels like it fits the episode, then yeah, they wrote songs for this shit. And it sucks ass. Remember Beyond the Mysterious Beyond from the seventh movie? Well, now it's Above the Mysterious Above. Above the Mysterious Above. Has come from. Remember Big 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 Water from the fifth movie? Well now it's Big 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 Test. It's been tough but kind of fun. I've had to think and climb and run. Now one more task and I'll have done the long neck test. God, it's so lazy in the way they change the lyrics and try to make it match the episode. It's so bad and super forced. Like trying to put a size 9 Nike on an elephant. Remember that adventuring song from the 10th movie? I swear to God, I've heard that one alone be sung at least 20 times in the series. I mean, what the fuck? Was this just a classic? Like, were there people begging to hear this song again over a thousand times? Because I didn't. 
Now, there are times when they actually write new songs, but listen to this and tell me if you can even stomach it. Well, I'm not sure this idea's a good one. What if that fast spider mom were to catch us? Why don't we leave the eggs right here and run? We are too close to home to leave them here. If they should hatch, they might fall. There's only one moment from the new songs I like, and if I'm being honest, I'm quite surprised they use these lyrics. For a kid's show, it's really pushing the envelope. I feel so happy, I want everyone to see. And I just ingested 63 pop brownies. Seriously though, look at Little Foot. He's higher than Peter could ever fly. He's more stone than the source rock. There really isn't much else to say about this show, at least that I haven't already said. Some episodes are fine, but nothing special, and the others are just kind of your typical bad and boring, really. Nothing else to say. If you want to check the show out yourself, well then, guess what? The entire season's on YouTube. Yep. All 26 episodes of the one and only season are on YouTube, free to watch. So if you're really curious about it, I'll leave a link in the description below to the official Land for Time channel so you can check it out yourself. I don't think you're missing much, but at the same time, I got that great chase scene out of it, so who am I to tell you otherwise? Give it a watch and see if this franchise ended where it should have began. Or at least was supposed to end. So, one more movie, guys. Only one more. Coming up next, guys, it's Lem for Time 14, Journey of the Brave. I'll see you then.